Welcome back folks, my name is Last No Meal, and since I needed just a bit more time for that next lore video, well since I'm waiting on Night City Wire for additional info, I wanted to talk about modding support and why Cyberpunk should fully embrace it, but before that just a quick word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Exter, trackable smart wallets. They offer premium quality wallets that are specifically designed for their cards. Their tactile and easy to access button will bring all the cards you have in an instant, and once you use it, you bring it back in. It's that easy. They come in different sizes and collections depending on your use. And on top of that, they also offer other compartments where you can put your extra things. They offer free shipping on orders over $50, free returns over $50 and a 12-month warranty. If you are interested, click the link down below and use the code on the screen for 20% off your purchase. So in these past couple of days, we had two big mod announcements for The Witcher, one being Farewell of the White Wolf for The Witcher 2 and the HD Texture mod which is coming out soon for the third installment. And this made me think, Cyberpunk 2077 is going to be huge in terms of popularity, I mean, just look at the hype surrounding it. And because CDPR takes their time with each game, there is usually a bigger gap in between where it's a little bit dry. But that's not a bad thing because you can still replay their games and have fun. But imagine if on top of that The Witcher 3 had modding support as The Witcher 2, allowing people to create entire new quest lines, worlds, etc. that would allow people to experience the game in a different way. And there are so many talented people who are willing to get on the job as soon as they actually could. We saw the mods for other titles, there are some which can be played as new fresh games. I mean just look at the entire Bethesda ecosystem, they always had insane modding community, one that keeps pushing their games into the future even today. Now even though Bethesda as a company made mistakes, the games themselves and the modding community behind it is elevating that game to whole different heights. That's actually why they had to create Farewell of the White Wolf in The Witcher 2. It was the only game which allowed it. And I'm happy for the amount of hype, you know, generated around it. It shows it has huge potential and just modding, you know, community in general. And even CDPR shared the mod. And in the past, CDPR has been very acceptive and, you know, ready to share people's creations. And even some people who created mods are actually now working at CDPR, which is insane. Having modding support also has two benefits. It allows you to work on the game longer because people still go back to it, you know, it's popular. And because you need a base game to experience the mod in the first place, devs still get the money from sales on a long run. And the second being user-generated content allows you to also focus on other things. The problem games have that don't have any modding tools or support is maintaining the game with updates and new content to make it interesting. Mods also enable people to adjust the game for their needs or generally change some stuff they don't like, especially after you finish the game a couple of times because it does take some time until you have proper mods on the scene. When the game comes out you will still have some mods that can be done without tools, but obviously later on things, you know, change whenever, you know, a game has modding support. I already heard that people are planning third person mods, so if they actually succeed to do it, you know, if you perhaps wanted to experience the game in that way, you will be able to do it. So modding gives you those possibilities. And I heard some arguments that lazy devs put out modding tools because they have content for free. That is absolutely not true. Putting out those tools shows they care about the community. And yes, indirectly they get content, but no one is forced to make it. People make it because they're passionate about the game, about the community and about the universe itself. Now, on the more gameplay and story-oriented side, the world of Cyberpunk has insane lore and world building. Creating different adventures in the game or adding some stuff would enhance the experience of the game. And if you look at Cyberpunk, you know, tabletop RPG and that entire scene, people create stuff and stories from scratch. So imagine if you can take those stories and that passion 
and put it into a video game. I see so many people also asking about space travel, for example, in Cyberpunk, you know, going to Crystal Palace or somewhere else, that could or could not happen in an expansion. We don't know yet, but people would be able to create it if they wanted as an alternative. That also includes different vehicle models, weapons and all that cool stuff. I mean, devs can only do so much, no one has infinite amount of time to work on everything and I'm sure every single dev would like to implement every single feature they actually wanted in it, but that is impossible because, well, for that to work, the game would actually have to come out in 2077. This could also help with single player after multiplayer comes out. People can still have two things, a single player game that also has modding community and multiplayer or, you know, choose one that benefits you personally. And that's why I still think to this day that releasing the red kit for The Witcher 3 would increase the popularity greatly. I mean, the game had a revival just from the Netflix show, so the vanilla side itself is good. But on a side note, a lot of potential has been lost. Now, we are still not sure what stance will CDPR take with Cyberpunk 2077. That does depend on time constraints and general plan of the company. And I'm sure that, you know, internally they already talked about, you know, modding support and those possibilities. I mean, they know about this. They know how much um, passion people have towards modding. So maybe CDPR, if anyone is watching this, just, you know, consider it. It would benefit this entire community greatly. Again, I'm not a developer, I'm not sure how much time does it take for them to give you those tools if they need to be created from scratch or not, but some companies already do go with it straight away, like we've seen GSC Game World saying that Stalker 2 will have modding support. You know, that is due to a fact that um, all this time when Stalker 2 was being, you know, created and when people didn't know if we're ever going to see the next Stalker game, people were creating mods. The entire stalker modding community is just plainly amazing. And because Cyberpunk has huge potential to earn that cult status itself, mods would be just a cherry on the top to benefit everything. Now this is everything I have for today. Tomorrow we do have Night City Wire episode 3. I will be restreaming that starting at 5 p.m. Central European Summer Time, so one hour before the actual show. We're gonna be talking about that, we're gonna be covering the entire show and later on talk about everything we have seen. Also, tell me down below, what do you think about all of this? Do you want the mods? What do you think about the overall modding support and community overall? And, you know, just tell me down below. Also, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button for more Cyberpunk 2077 videos and join our growing community on Twitter and Discord. I also have a Patreon page. If you wanted an extra way to support the channel, you can do it through there. And huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is LKM signing out and stay classy, everyone. Bye-bye.